Hello, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are all well. We are here to give you some insights about the half-year numbers 2020 that we publicized this morning. When I, see, when I say we, it's on my left side. Peter Steiger, member of the Reduced Management Board and Chief Controller, and also Country Manager of the United States. He will certainly say something about the United States. And on my right side is Mr. Kennel, Chief Financial Officer and also member of the Reduced Management Board. We are here at the Nicholas G. Hayek Auditorium at Cité du Temps. And last time we made a transmission from here was in March, where we already have seen certain impacts from COVID-19. Now we have a full picture for the half year. And I think we have also a clear picture of what will happen in the second half of the year. And we'll talk about this and give you some guidance. Now, when we look at the beginning of the year, 2020, we were all full of energy. We still are full of energy, but of course the outlook at the beginning of the year was different. As you see from our numbers, January started well, with a good profit, a good operating income, and a good profit for the overall group. But we felt already in the last week, of course, the impact of a lockdown that started to be reality in mainland China. And as you know, mainland China is one of the biggest markets for the Swatch Group. But despite this last week, with, despite the slowdown, we managed to make a very good January. However, what followed was, of course, totally different. And it was driven by a total lockdown. And when I say total, it's above 80% of our distribution channels worldwide that were forced to be shut down. It's not that the consumer doesn't want it to buy or to shop or to enjoy. We were forced to shut down most of our own shops, but especially important also of the third party shops. Now, this has never been seen before. I must say I am a very creative guy. Usually I have a lot of imagination, but I have never been thinking that it could happen that in the free world you have the orders from government to shut down your operations. Now, of course, this impacted us very strongly, and we want to show you what does it mean, the impact. But we also want to show you how quick habits come back, and especially for quality products, for products that are not living just one season, the future looks again rather positive. So we went through four very difficult months. And you were all part of it, everywhere. The consumer, journalists, analysts, we here in the management. These were very difficult four months. However, as you see, we are all gray-haired gentlemen, not so much Mr. Kennel, has no hair at all, so that's an advantage. So we have some experience going through these kind of uh, situations, not an extreme like, uh, one like this one, but it helped us to navigate through this. The whole team, the management board, but also the board of directors, did a very efficient job, quick, not any place for fear or drama, in the contrary. Just looking what kind of opportunities are there. And there are a lot of opportunities. Winston Churchill said, and uh, Mr. Steiger told me this once, Winston Churchill said, never waste a good crisis. And that's exactly what we are going to do, especially in the second half of the year. But let me go quickly now to show you 
what happened during these months. But let, let's also look what happened in May and June. And in our publication from this morning, you see that in June, the group is already back in, with profits. The whole group, not just the watches and jewelry. Production, electronic systems, the whole group is back to profitability. Now, before that we talk then about the second half of the year, let me explain you the situation of the consumer, the impact on the consumer. You know that we're always analyzing the sellout numbers from the own stores, but also from retailers. We try always to get these numbers. It gives you an instant uh, situation of the mood. And let's start what happened in our biggest market that we have in mainland China. Can we have this graph? You see it, and we have put it in the publication. And you see clearly, we gave as a comparison, April, May, June, from 19, also in this graph, and going, of course, to June 2020. Now, when you look at this graph, with the percentages of growth, and this is our own retail in mainland China, the first paragraph that you see here. So you see that January slowed down to 11% compared to January last year because of the start of the COVID-19 situation in mainland China. And then came the shock. Minus 83% compared to last year. And then, of course, slowly the lockdown was eased. Minus 22%, going to minus 3 in April. And then you see the explosion. The moment the shops were open again, and more important, psychologically, the fear of the people disappeared. The, the habit to buy beautiful things and brands that you know came back very quickly. And you see, 76% in May above last year. And May last year was already a strong double-digit growth month. And June? 60%. Now, the 60% is mainly due because there's one week at less in June 2020 compared with June 2019. And that makes a big impact. But there's also a little bit of Beijing impact here. So that's the first page that's interesting. Now, let's look at wholesale. Means what we are selling to a retailer and then he puts it in his stores. But that's what Swatch Group China sells to a retailer. And here you see the numbers, the same catastrophic impact, minus 86%. Of course, the retailer stop to order. You can perhaps change the graph, such that we see it. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Steiger. So here you have the graph. So you see here, minus 86%, <coughs> minus 60, minus 32. And then it starts to ease in May, and it becomes positive. Of course, the retailer has stock. He bought in December and January, in anticipation of Chinese New Year, a lot of product. And then he had to shut down his stores. But now it's easing up. But there will be a delay. And this delay means, of course, it's going back to us in Switzerland. It's going back into our factories until that the factories are spooling up and coming back again. It will take three, four, five more months since the first strong slowdown. Now, if we go to the next graph that I managed now to handle without the help of Mr. Steiger, thanks. <laughs> So 
we have the whole Swatch Group China turnover. Before we saw retail, we saw wholesale, and here we see the mix. And also here the same trend, a shock, minus 84, then minus 52, minus 26, but coming strongly back in May and June. And July shows a very strong performance again. Now I show you a graph that we have not uh, publicized. And this is from a partner of us. It's one of the biggest retailers in the world. It's Hengdeli in mainland China. He's not selling only our brands, he's selling also brands from competitors. And you see the similarity of the performance. February minus 89, March minus 38, always compared to the year before. And then in April minus 15, and then China comes back to a more normal life, shops are all open, and it jumps immediately to plus 24%, and plus 22%. So this is a country that went into full lockdown. Unfortunately, Switzerland took the example of this country, not only Switzerland, but many other countries, they opted for a full lockdown. Now, let's see what happens to a country that is not making a full lockdown. Korea. Now, in Korea, we have the retail sales, domestic sales, of course, travel retail sales we don't show because there was no travel retail. And here you see that the impact is much, much less. In March, minus 16%. And then already in April, plus one. And in May and June, a growth of 23, respectively 34%. You see the difference when you shut down the stores and the impact? And here in Korea, you only had the impact of the fear of the people, of the change, the way you buy. You can go, less people can go into a store, the restaurants are not uh, open the way you are used to, but people adapted to it. And here the impact is, of course, much shorter than in a country with a full lockdown. Then, of course, I have also the numbers of wholesale in Korea. And here you see it's only minus 2%. So the retailer, he ordered immediately. There was only one month of delay. He ordered immediately again product. And he ordered plus 17 and plus 34%. And again, compared with a strong month of the year before. And when we look at total sales, this is again combined wholesale and retail, of course, of the Swatch Group. You see, again, the trend that is comparing or is confirming what we said before. A very short, very violent uh, loss of turnover and then a strong increase. And this is a pattern that we see in many countries. Mr. Steiger, what do you see in the United States where everything started a little bit later than in China? Okay, I would say the US, of course, follows the, the same uh, pattern as just seen before of uh, China. So a country which had a strong uh, lockdown and a rebound after the lockdown has been uh, lifted. However, as you already indicated, there are two or three particularities in the States compared to other countries. The first is that the whole uh, reduction of the sales started two months later than in China. That is simply because the U.S. government had put their measures in place only after China and after uh, Europe. In fact, we have seen it only in the second half of March. Before, in January and February, we still had double-digit growth compared to the previous uh, year. Then the second particularity is that the drop in the first months and the second months was not as strong as in other countries. So we have not reached 
minus 80, minus 90, or even 95%, as we have seen in other countries. The reason being was the online business, which we have built up over the past year, and which, of course, not surprisingly, reached uh, one record after the other during this uh, lockdown. And the third difference to other countries uh, was that once the rebound started beginning of uh, May or end of May, it was interrupted one week later by the riots following these terrible incidents in, in Minneapolis. So the business really took off again in the second half of uh, June. If we take the figures, June as a total was still 47% down compared to previous year. But the first half, when we still had these riots, was down minus 62%. And the second half, we were back to minus 35%. Uh, the first two weeks of July now trend at about minus 20 to 25 percent compared to previous year. If we look only at our own retail, then we are already at single digit, minus 8, minus 10 percent. Now, e-commerce, when you look at Swatch, Tiso, and especially Omega, because Omega did a step in the United States to be there relatively early, to pioneer in the in the e-commerce level in the United States, how do you see the development there? Okay, it, uh, up to now it only takes one direction, that's upwards. And interesting, also after the lockdown has now been lifted and uh, and the stores are open again. The growth is well, in fact, it's doubling if we take the total compared to previous year. If we take the first six months. There are differences by uh, brand. Omega is the star performer in that respect. But for example, also Swatch has over 50% of growth. And the interesting thing at Swatch is that, as we have already communicated, I believe, at all earlier occasion, we are guiding this group out of the physical distribution into the online business in the US. And it shows now that the online figures are growing so much that they compensate nearly the loss which we have by closing physical, uh, physical stores. And of course, that has also a very positive impact on the bottom line, because to run an online shop is much less uh, costly than to have a Swatch store at the, uh, at the very prime location. Thank you, Mr. Steiger. When we come to stores, uh, Mr. Kennel, uh, how many uh, stores have we uh, closed when you compare now the half-year results and you compare to, I think, the last year half-year results or the end of the year, how many less stores we have worldwide, not just in the United States? Yes, worldwide we closed about 260 stores, but we uh, started uh, already in Hong Kong uh, quite uh, before the year end, and now we accelerated this uh, closing of uh, some stores, yes. Okay. Perhaps to add, we have now 1,800 stores. Yeah. So before we had uh, 2, yeah, about 2,000. Yeah. Okay, so, so that you understand the 260 stores that we closed. It's true, uh, Mr. Kennel is right. In Hong Kong, of course, we acted before and then we accelerated the closings in Hong Kong. The situation is Hong Kong, you know it all. There are nearly no sales in Hong Kong at the moment for different reasons. A lot of reasons that you see, but it's not just COVID, but it's also the political unrest that you have there. Now, the main other stores that we closed, apart is Swatch, you heard it, because e-commerce is working well in the United States, but it's mainly CK stores, because with CK, we stop our collaboration end of 21, and many of our uh, retail shops we had to decide, because they come to an end at the end of 20, or now at the first half of 20, and you could only go further if you commit for the next three, five, seven, or 10 years. And since we have decided not to continue with the CK brand, it makes no sense. We also advised, of course, the parent company of CK to give us quickly 
the company who would take over. But so far, we have not heard, any, heard anything, so there was no way that we could conclude new contracts. So the main part of this is coming also from CK. And associated with it, you see that we have about 6% or 6.5% less personnel in the group worldwide. And this is mainly due to the retail reduction that we have and, of course, to the downsizing of the CK uh, operations in view of the handover at some point of time. Uh, we'll see when this will happen and who will be the company who will take over uh, this operation. Now, we were also asked about the short work. And yes, we have an insurance against this. And we paid since so many years and never used the short work possibilities or rarely used them also in the financial crisis. But this time, with government orders to shut down everywhere, so we, of course, used this means in keeping all or in keeping many people on board. So just to give you a dimension, it's more or less 170 million worldwide that we got paid from the insurance that's the right number, I think, yes. uh, for short work. <clears throat> but when I count how many we paid already or only in Switzerland, in the insurance companies since many, many, many years, or in the insurance from the state for short work, it accounts to up to 400 million. So we have only taken a part of what we have paid into uh, this instrument. To add, perhaps, that out of this 170 million, 150 is from the Swiss. Unemployment so the main part, 150, it's of course the manufacturing, because we have so many factories here, we do our things ourselves, so of course we are hit. The one side, we take profit because when everything starts again with our own production, we are quickly up, but if there is a stop in, uh, in shops that can sell products, of course we take the big blow there in manufacturing. Okay. You want yeah, to add something? Yeah, I can perhaps add the actual situation, at least here in Switzerland. So if I take the average of the last week, there were 6,000 employees who were in short-time uh, work. 2,500 are taking unused vacations or are reducing their overtime. And the rem remaining 8.5 thousand, so just a half of our 17,000, which we have in Switzerland, are fully active in the factories now. Now, as I showed you before, when you look at the second half of the year and with the development in most of the countries where the COVID measures are now much more liberal and there is no full lockdown anymore, we anticipate that for the third and the fourth quarter, of course, especially the manufacturing will come back to a level of full capacity again. We'll see how quick it will happen, but it was rather quick, the performance in these countries where the measures have been completely stopped. And, and here we are really positive that in the third and the fourth quarter we will be back. So short work will probably end sometime in the third quarter for some companies much earlier than for some others. That's what we are foreseeing. Then with all the things that we have been talking about lockdown, about uh, fear from uh, sickness. Of course, we have the sickness of the Swiss franc. Strong Swiss franc, and it gets stronger and stronger. And of course, we are not just looking to the euro. We have big business in the dollar area and in other currencies. And you see the result adding to the situation of the lockdowns, we also lost about 5%, nearly 5% uh, of turnover because of the strong Swiss franc. You want to add something, Mr. Kennel? Yes, 113 uh, millions of Swiss francs we lost uh, in this uh, exchange rate. This is huge. Okay, now let's have a look.
perhaps for the second half of the year. Or would you like, you gentlemen, add something for the first half? I mean, there are many information that we could uh, go deeper inside, but you would like to add something that we forgot? If we can perhaps explore on the cash flow. Yes, maybe the financial situation. We have an equity ratio of 84.6%. This is still very strong and a solid balance sheet. And of course, cash is most important, as you know all, and we have been managing cash very carefully. And we generated cash flow from operating before taxes paid 172 million, then we had to pay taxes 144 million, and we still got the cash flow from operating activities, which is positive of 28 million. But we postponed uh, many uh, investments, and we invested uh, cash-wise uh, 40 percent less than last year, and uh, the dividends, uh, you know it also, we paid 31 percent less dividends. So we have really uh, a very strong financial uh, net liquidity position at the end of June, which is 944 million, and this is 29 percent, or 213 million more than we had end of June last year. Yeah, we were criticized very often in the community of uh, the analysts and some journalists also, by the way, that we have uh, enough liquidity, that we have uh, such a high rate of uh, capitalization. And also we were criticized about our stock. What can we say about the stock in the first <laughs> half, Mr. Steiger? <laughs> Okay, I believe the inventories, we uh, ended June at 6.8 billion, slightly down compared to December 2019 by about 1%, 70 million, but 300 million lower than uh, one year ago. The drop against uh, December was half-half between components and finished, uh, finished watches. If you allow me a reflection, I believe that the inventories that they remain stable and have not increased during this crisis is not as self-evident than perhaps many of uh, us uh, might think about it. At the one hand, you had the sharp drop of the outgoing goods following the enforced lockdowns. At the other hand, you had then the continuation of the goods flowing in as the result of the well-known long production lead times in our industry. Both together would let you expect rather an increase of inventory and not a stable development as we had uh, now over the last six months. But on the other hand, the stable development falls fully in line with our long-term policy that we have communicated at earlier occasions, the policy to keep our stock as much as possible the same throughout the economic cycle and this to avoid that we had the swings in our uh, production. So a policy that showed also the, 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 the value over the past uh, few months. And the second remark, perhaps, I believe the crisis was also a test of another company paradigm, which we have defended now over years, despite the critics from uh, some financial analysts. That's the paradigm that we want to have always enough stock, finished watches in the markets. We give as a guideline at least eight weeks of regular demand, but as well as in the brand uh, HQs. Uh, the fact that we had such stock in the markets abroad made it possible to meet the demand of our customers, despite all the interruptions of the transportation chains, even during these lockdowns or this crisis. And the strong result, for example, in China, which we have seen before, would have not been possible if we would not had before enough inventory on site to covering the period when the borders for international flights were still closed. And to end up, the stock which we have always at the brand HQ, with this comfortable knowledge that there is enough stock to replenish always the markets, we were then also able 
to make the decision relatively early in the crisis to ramp down strongly the production to reduce also then the cost and protect the bottom line. You know what this is called? The long-term strategy that you maintain, especially in uh, times of a, of a crisis as we had. And this long-term strategy has been paying off. Now, let's look at the second half of the year. What are we going to expect? Of course, the world will not be one-to-one -one the same, but it will be with full of opportunities. Because as you can imagine, there was no launch of novelties in the first half of the year. Doesn't make sense. Why would you, if the shops and the distribution is closed? And why would you do advertising for it? Why would you do events for it if people cannot travel, cannot see what is happening? So of course, all this will come in the second half of the year. In the second half of the year, with our brands, Omega, with James Bond, or Longines, with their new products, that's called Spirit, and tells the historical strengths of Longines in aviation, or Tissot, with the Tissot Connect, that can now be launched in the second half of the year, this will, of course, bring a lot of energy and interest in the point of sales. And also the big events, of course, will not be here in the second half of the year. The Swatch Group has a tradition to invest a lot of money in Olympic Games or other big events, races, horse racing, etc. All this, of course, cannot happen this year. So there will, of course, be the money used in a different way. So the cost base for the second half of the year will also be reduced. Of course, less stores. Of course, less marketing investment, but also better marketing investments because we have, of course, negotiated better tariffs for the second half of the year. We have taken the opportunity to say, wait a minute, now we have to review everything. That's what we did, by the way. And then, there is, of course, 2021 coming soon. We need to produce already for 2021 Olympic Games. They should have been now, but there will be nearly two Olympic Games following very quickly, one the other, 21 in Tokyo and 22 in Beijing. And there will be America's Cup that will also be already in December. I think a part of it, I hope it will happen, and in March. So there is a lot of opportunities out there that permits us to fulfill what we have said this morning in this release, that we are really looking forward for a very good second half of the year that will bring the group again into profitability. Because this half-year result is extraordinary. The Swatch Group had never nor a half-year result, nor a full-year result that was negative. That's an exception, but for the full year, of course, we are very confident that we will be uh, show a very good profit. Of course, not comparable with the year before. So this is what we see in the outlook. You want to add something, gentlemen? I'm fine, thank you. No, it's all said, thank you. Okay, so... We wanted to give you some insights of where we stand, and I hope it was helpful. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Take care.